Well, welcome to our My Glory Sierra Norte info call. Uh, my name is Kim Hunter, and this is... I'm Zachary Hunter. Zachary Hunter. Um, and we're excited to have y'all join us tonight to learn more about uh, our trip at the end of August in Oaxaca. Um, but before we get started, uh, we're going to have Zach kind of present a little bit more about Mexico and Oaxaca, just to give everybody a little more of a background on the region, um, the indigenous cultures that live here. And then we'll also have Alyssa introduce herself um, and share a bit more about mushroom dyeing for those of you who don't know uh, about it, as well as what we'll be doing in the Sierra Nortes. Mm -hmm. And then uh, share more about the trip and, and take some questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now it's time to share a screen. Can you see a different screen? Is it working? It's, uh, Oops. Not yet. There we go. Yeah. No, nope, something a lot weird. Nope. You'd think by now we had this down. Yeah, Zoom. Zoom life. Maybe we're out of <laughs> Too many in ILR. All right. Well, so uh, I thought first I talk about the fungivore. You may have. Well, um, Kim has a company doing called Traveling Traders Bazaar, and she does uh, immersions into textiles. Oh, what are you doing? Come back here. It's on auto auto share. <laughs> um, <laughs> you done now? Okay. <laughs> All right, so uh -huh. uh, the, the Michael Lores is really sort of a culmination of three passions brought together. Um, mine is, as the fungivore, is uh, eating of mushrooms, and I've been exploring sort of the science of cooking mushrooms and sort of what makes a mushroom taste like a mushroom for several years now. Uh, Alyssa Allen, whom I've known for 10 years now, uh, is sort of the the queen of mushroom dyes and uh, was something that I was always fascinated with. And Kim, my wife, is really into textiles. And the three of those things came together with Alyssa as a bridge just so perfectly uh, for these adventures to go out into the, the mountains with the Zapotecs and, and Mixtex and others and collect dye mushrooms and um, really get into what the, the artisan, just the artisan nature of these incredible mountains. So before we go in, I do want to give a quick overview. Um, probably most of you are familiar with Mexico, although a lot of the times we don't see the relief map. Um, if you are familiar with the Rocky Mountains, you can see that Mexico is kind of an extin extenuated version of that with very little of what we have as the Great Plains or uh, of, the, of the South um, at all. In fact, the coastlines of Mexico are very thin, uh, especially down here where we have a subduction fault and the mountains from Oaxaca can rise up to 10,000 feet within like 30 kilometers from the coastline. Um, as a result of that, Mexico has some really incredible uh, diversity and uh, politically, it's divided into 31 states plus Mexico City. And you can see Oaxaca way down there at the bottom. Uh, this does make Oaxaca's coastline for the most part face south, um, which is always interesting when you're watching the sunset and it dips off to the right. Um, and you're on the Pacific Ocean as well. Right now, we're actually one hour ahead of the West Coast, um, even though we're way over here south of Texas because Mexico stopped observing daylight savings time, which is really cool. Um, let's see. Um, the general outlay of Mexico, there are over actually still over 600 indigenous languages spoken throughout the country of Mexico. A lot of them, uh, they used to call them dialects, but now they're realizing a lot of these dialects, quote unquote, can't actually speak to one another. Um, and this is a, a general map. And you can see that down in, in, in Oaxaca, it's purple and that's Zapoteco. And that's actually appropriate for what we're going to be doing on this trip, but is far from accurate for Oaxaca. Um, this is the state of Oaxaca. As you can see, it has uh, very high mountain ranges, uh, the Sierra Sur down at the bottom and the Sierra Norte where all of my little the valleys and then the Sierra Norte above that. Uh, we will be spending our time in the Sierra Norte, uh, which is above all those little blue balloons. And those little blue balloons are actually markings of archeological zones of both the Zapotec and the Mixtec people, which we'll explore some of. 
Um, as you can see from this, the, the mountains in Oaxaca go up to 10,000 feet, sort of as a norm at the top. Um, and some of the places that we'll be trekking are going to be up almost that high. What's incredible for me coming from Oregon, where Mount Hood is 11,200 feet, is that even above 10,000 feet, you're still completely in forest. And, you know, in Oregon, you would be so far above the tree line, you know, wouldn't be able to you know, breathe. Um, uh, Oaxaca, because because of this um, huge difference, it is actually one of those diverse states uh, in a mega diverse country. And Oaxaca has over 50 percent of what all of Mexico has. And Mexico is vying with Colombia in the top five of the most diverse countries uh, in the world. And so Oaxaca has an incredible diversity um, and brings together some really interesting landscapes of both the East Coast and the West Coast um, together because the mountain chain sort of pinches off down here. Uh, Oaxaca does actually have the thinnest part uh, of the Mexican uh, or the Mesoamerican um, landmass. Um, Oaxaca is divided up into eight regions, and actually uh, tomorrow those eight regions are going on strike downtown and blocking off a huge part of the town. <laughs> they have a map that they distributed. It'll be this street is Valley San Charles. This is going to be the Mixteca. This will be the coast of people. Uh, it's a te International Teachers Day tomorrow, and strikes are a huge part uh, of of the Oaxacan heritage. Our political, um, our political action here, yeah. These generally follow uh, the general language spoken. Um, whoops. However, uh, there are sixteen language groups in in uh, Oaxaca state alone. Um, and in uh, the Valley Centrais and the Sierra Norte is generally dominated by Zapotec as with some of the Sierra Sur. And then Mixteca is obviously mixed with Mixtex and that goes all the way up to Puebla and all the way into Guerrero as well. Um, and we'll be dealing primarily with the Zapotec folks for this trip. Uh, Oaxaca is a cradle of civilization for anyone who doesn't know. Corn is currently the number one grown crop worldwide and it was invented right here in Oaxaca. Uh, there are caves, uh, the caves of Mitla uh, actually contain remnants of corn and pumpkins from 12,000 or so years ago, as well as cave paintings uh, with ancient dyes and techniques. And I believe we'll be going to the caves of Mitla on the Sierra Norte trip. Faster, I'm not going to sure. I'm not going to Tantitla. All right. <laughs> they Artisan there. trip, honey. Artisan trip. <laughs> it's art. It is art. <laughs> but we're going to step by the way. Um, now, it is unclear if the people that did the cave paintings are the same people that built the Zapotec Empire. Um, but those little blue dots that you saw earlier in my map represent a lot of the, the archaeological zones that are around. And these are some of the more significant. And these are different ones. Like, keep in mind, this is all over the valley. These, these uh, ruins are absolutely enormous and fantastic. And the Zapotec Empire, Monte Alban, which is there on the lower right, uh, was was around for 1,300 years as a city, as the as sort of the main center of the of the Valle Centrales, which is now sitting right above Oaxaca City. Um, and the Zapotecs are who still occupy the mountains and are still occupy are still utilizing the sustainable farming, uh, dyeing and natural dyeing and and foraging that they've been doing for thousands of years. Which you'll actually get to see in the Sierra Norte. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is the ethnic diversity of Oaxaca um, to kind of distributed. You can see there are the 16 language groups up there um, with Zapotec distributed all over, Mixtec a little, and, and others more concentrated. Um, and that's important because these are the folks that have the mushroom knowledge. These guys have been doing this for thousands of years. And this is in uh, the Mixtec language. And this is a picture of our friend Itahi. Um, who we went with Alyssa last year into the Mixteca region and got to work with some of the folks uh, in her mountains, which are the, um, the Occidental, Sierra Occidental. Um, and uh, she has been leading the charge and has been um, uniting a bunch of groups to lead mycotourism expeditions in her part since she was like 16 years old. Um, and that's been what we found here in Mexico is that a lot of the folks that are getting PhDs, that are getting their degrees, that are challenging th all, all of the sort of ways are between their 20s and 30s here. There's a very young, um, energetic force that is uh, equal to the folks that are doing fundus and whatnot in the States that are really mapping the mushrooms and really also mapping the ethnic uh, and ethnomycology um, here in Oaxaca. Um, the culture down here is that generally those uh, in the cities, uh, used to be mycophobic, all the chefs are changing that quite a bit. Uh, the rural mestizos don't generally have an opinion and the indigenous are mycophilic. They love their mushrooms, they know about their mushrooms. Uh, they, they employ a lot of different um, uh, uses for their mushrooms, including enrolling their children in nature. 
Uh, and for us, it all began in 2019 in Quahimaloyas, where we will be going on this trip as well. In fact, we will be going down to this um, this meadow uh, as part of our as part of our adventures. Um, and uh, it all began there in, in 2019 at the Quahimaloyas Mushroom Festival, and we were hooked. Uh, and it is just it's been an awesome journey um, ever since. So at that, I'd like to turn it over to Alyssa and uh, have her sort of talk about mushroom dyes, why mushroom dyes, and um, and give a little history of how this all came to be in our third year down here in Oaxaca. Hey, everybody. Um, yeah, I'm super excited, of course, to go back to Oaxaca. Um, I came about this uh, by chance by running into Zach and Kim at Soma Camp one year, and I think it was pretty early on and pre-marriage days and um they're they they said hey Alyssa come over and check out these mushrooms and there lo and behold dye mushrooms growing um right at the base of this tree at in Sonoma uh California Occidental California in case you don't know about some camp anyways um that's where we all kind of or where I met Kim for the first time and uh kind of talk dyes with Zach maybe for the first time and um and the energy was exchanged and so fast forward I think four or five years post pandemic and um or yeah post pandemic um and uh these trips to Oaxaca have started so I'm really excited to be going back to Kohima Lois which was my first experience uh in Oaxaca um, I really didn't know what I was getting into, and um, I couldn't be more pleased with the experience um, being at 10,000 feet and looking for mushrooms um, with children from the community and elders, um, medic like medicine women, and um, just kind of all the representatives from the community going out and foraging. And um, one of the, the, I don't know, exciting things to me about foraging for mushrooms for color is incorporating that passion for your land into whatever textile art you make. And for the folks of Quahima Lois, they're not really textile artists or focused. So, but they're totally forage focused and, and, I could relate with the children because I also was a child forager. I've been passionate about mushrooms since I was a little kid. And so hanging out with these kids who were like the ones that are going out and recognizing the mushrooms and bringing them back and, um, and they're so knowledgeable. And so even though there's a language barrier, there is some translation happening. And these um, kids are really the bridge between that nature and bringing that back to the community. Um, and so showing the power of textile arts, which is such a, a big part of Oaxacan culture on the grand scale, it's almost, um, I don't know, bridging this, the foragers to the textile arts community, um, which happens more in the Valley um, Zapotec area. So I don't know, uh, to see the, um, excitement in the kids that we showed um, that you see the jars on the screen here. This is our demonstration that we did for the community up there. Um, and to see the, the surprise of um, the colors that are coming out of the mushrooms, you just see kind of light bulbs going off. So I'm really excited to go back and have the opportunity to go more in depth with that. Um, it's revealing to me to go to Oaxaca. It's revealing to me what my where my passion comes from, and kind of really um, appreciating the place aspect of um, what this what my passion is with mushrooms. I often ask myself why mushroom dies, but I love mushrooms, and I've always been attracted to wondering what they are and how to use them. I've never really been good at foraging large amounts of food mushrooms um, because I'm too distracted by all of the colors and interesting textures 
So mushroom dyeing to me, um, it just is a way of incorporating place without necessarily having to consume and eat mushrooms, which I also enjoy eating mushrooms to some extent. <laughs> I, I threw this slide in because one of the aspects, and, and this is actually from our first year, we, we asked Sam if he could arrange a talk so Alyssa could give a presentation um, on, and she stayed up all night the night before putting together a presentation strictly with the photos that we had taken. With very slow to limit it, no way. Very slow internet. <laughs> uh, with, with all of the photos that we had taken just on the on the trips. And this was a this was the turnout of uh, of the presentation in the town of uh, Teotitlan, the Valle, which is a town of dyers and weavers, but not necessarily mushroom hunters. Um, and uh, it's it's just sort of started opening doors. You can see this little girl up on the left was like, so excited to have a picture with Alyssa and have her arms around all of the different mushroom diets. But she was, you know, she's exactly what we're talking about, like just blown away with the possibilities of that. Cause obviously she's, she's aware of mushrooms. Yeah. Um, and this has resulted in um, kind of what this uh, Sierra Norte tour is all around. And um, I'll let Kim talk a little bit about what makes this particular week so special and why we're so excited for it. Yeah, yeah, for this one. Um, so we're coming back to Quahimaloyas um, after taking a year hiatus there. So we're really excited, as Alyssa said, she's excited to go back and um, uh, both go foraging with them as well as do a demo there um, where we can show field testing um, to y'all or to the participants that come as well as to the town. And then we're going to be staying in uh, El Carazal, which is another lovely uh, baking village. But where I'm really excited is you know, in the Sierra Nortes, there's several of these different villages and a community that we've gotten to know is San Pedro Cajonos. And they are actually a, a silk um, village where they raise their own silk, spin it, weave it and dye it with natural dyes. And I've been doing um, a couple of different workshops with them through my more artisan based tours. Um, but they haven't actually worked with mushrooms in the past, but they're really skilled natural dyers. And um, the community there who we've met at also mushroom fairs up in the Sierra Nortes is really excited to learn more about the mushrooms in their forests. So we've been invited to forage with the community or some members of the community um, in San Pedro. And the structure here is really neat the way the communities do it because San Pedro is actually lower and it's quite dry, but they act all the communities get forest land up to the next ridge. And so everyone basically has the really high altitude forest all the way down to that. And so we've we've actually foraged on the other side of the road from this forest that's theirs to forage in, but we've never foraged in that and they've never looked for dye mushrooms in that. So it's actually a really cool opportunity to explore a new area and be able to um, explore several altitudes, I think, uh, just in their forest within a short little range. And that is something interesting that Zach um, mentioned, but that also we didn't cover in the presentation, which is that the Sierra Nortes are part of a coalition of villages called the Mancomunados. And so they're actually, um, they're responsible like uh, collectively for the, the forest. And as uh, if you're not from those communities, you have to ask permission to be in them as well as to go and forage in them. So that's something that we've been working on for the last five years is cultivating relationships with all these communities and getting permission um, with guides and, and having local community members come along mm -hmm. for all of those um, for all of those forays, which really makes them so much more, um, more better. Um, but I'll just do some quick highlights and then we'll take questions. So I don't want to take too much of folks' time. Um, but uh, just sort of the, the highlights are um, that we're going to begin and end the trip in Oaxaca City. Um, we love Oaxaca City. We think it's wonderful and recommend that po folks stay a few days before or a few days after. Um, but we really like to go out into the mountains and spend time in those communities and in the forests. Um, our first day after our opening dinner. Um, so we'll have hotels the first night and the last night in Oaxaca City. And then our uh, first full day, we'll go to Monte Alban where we're uh, gonna have a guided tour with Monzi. She's a second generation uh, guide who is just an incredible uh, wealth of yeah. information about the uh, prehistory of the space and the Zapotec culture, um, which she counts herself at as part of um, it might be actually, but we can come take that. Uh, and so we're really excited to go back with her and um, kind of lay the foundation for the, the valley that we're in and the and the area that we're in um, for the history. And then we'll head up to Quahimaloyas, which we already talked to for a couple nights. 
um, with a full day with a foray, as well as uh, kind of demo to show field testing. Um, we'll also have uh, Alyssa give a kind of talk the night before we go to showcase some uh, dye mushrooms and sort of give people a little bit of a primer on IDing or what we're going to be looking for while we're out there. Um, so that'll be a sort of our first night in the mountains before we go out. Um, and then we'll be uh, pouring in three other communities, both El Carrizal community between um, Llano Grande, which is between Carrizal and Cuajimaloyas, and then San Pedro. We'll uh, be in Carrizal for most of that time. And we have a, our whole community space that's dedicated to um, letting us set up our own dye station, our own ID table. Um, in El Carrizal, we also eat with a local family that raises all their own uh, food locally. So it's really a beautiful experience and like one of my favorite areas of Oaxaca. Um, and we'll also spend time in, in San Pedro at the Silk Sanctuary. We'll um, walk through the process with the artisans and then also dye with the silk. Everybody will get three sort of small skeins um, of silk, which you can choose your adventure on what you would like to dye uh, those three skeins with. Uh, we'll have some natural dyes that the artisans use, and we'll also have a few mushroom dyes that we'll bring along because we also want to share mm -hmm. the knowledge and showcase what uh, the artisans could use in their own backyard. And if, then depending on how many mushrooms we find, there will there could be opportunities to dye something that you bring from home as well. Yes, um, and I'll be sending people, it's like participants will get sort of a list of, of weights of like, if you'd like to bring your own fibers to dye, we'll sort of provide some weight limits um, just so that you don't bring more than we can put into pots and um, and then everybody can throw stuff in if we have extra And then dye. just one typo at the very bottom, that should say six nights in mountain cabins, not five nights. Um, <laughs> so yeah, bonus day. Yeah, <laughs> and then we'll be stopping through Teotitlan Dye Vibe. Teotitlan del Valle on the way back from the mountains. Um, and that is actually the silk, that's not silk, this, that is the weaving and uh, wool uh, dyeing village that's about 30 minutes outside of Oaxaca. Um, and we'll stop in and see a few of the weavers who um, work with this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll also, I'm hoping we'll stop back into, so we're actually sourcing our wool this year from a women's uh, collective in uh, Teotitlan named uh, Vida Nueva. And they actually source all of the, their wool um, raw and then process it themselves. Um, and so we'll be actually getting our wool from them. And they work with both white wool as well as gray and darker wool, natural colored wool. So we're, I'm, this is our first year actually like having a, colored wool. I, I talked to Alyssa about this too, and we're quite excited because. With it's different so color wool, you get different colors uh, of the dyes. So this year we're getting to expand. We'll be bringing wool to play with. We're going to be playing with uh, artisans, the silk artisans up in the mountains, and then uh, really get a full range of uh, yeah. exploring uh, dyeing this year, which yeah. I'm really excited. And then just the last sort of thing that we wanted to let people know about is that there is an add-on. Um, the trip ends on September 5th. That's when you check out of your hotel. Our last meal together is the night of September 4th. Um, and so on September 5th, if folks would like to, we do have a weaving add-on. Um, if anybody wants to go to Teotitlan and spend a day with Sam, who's on the left here, um, and his family, we didn't have a chance to build it into the tour as we have in the past in other years, but we still really highly recommend the experience and are connecting people to work directly with him if they want to go. They have an go. Airbnb as well. They have an Airbnb on Place site. Stay. So if you do want to stay for a couple of days in Teotitlan and do a weaving with the family, we share more information about that. But I always just like to let people know about it because um, it's really a lovely experience if you're a weaver mm -hmm. and you want to put some of your mushroom dyed yarn to work while you're um, in Oaxaca. Um, but why don't we just like, we don't have to, the, how do you join is pretty self-explanatory. We can kind of open it up to mm -hmm. take questions um, mm -hmm. if anybody has any. And yeah, thanks for joining our info. Nobody's raising their hand. Nobody's raising their hand. Oh, sorry, I didn't raise my hand, but hey. <laughs> hey, Rebecca. Uh, um, thanks for that very informative presentation. That was really interesting. And hi, Alyssa. I don't know. Hi. <laughs> I I met Alyssa through my Southern Mysteries, a women's mushroom conference in Wisconsin in like, I think it was 2021. 
Cool. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I recognize your face, but I didn't know where from. <laughs> I know, I know. It's been like a long time. So I was super excited to see this opportunity. Um, sounds sounds amazing. Um I had a couple questions. Let's see here. So so I saw on that slide about the mushroom festival. I didn't I it went by too fast and went what date that was. Will that be when we'll be there or is that another time? You know, they don't always announce the festivals until they get very close. Celestino, uh, we we have, you know, we have to pick our dates a long time ago. So we do our best to try to get it uh to, oh wait sorry this one's festival. normally this in one july one. the the mushroom festival in kohi Maloyas is normally in july, in july yeah. so oh, okay, okay. Be for that but we do do basically our own little mini festivals in both kohi Maloyas and in el carazal we have our own id table on each each of those places um we go with the local hungaras and guides um so we really get to experience it samples. you know zach cooks up samples so um it's a little the um the mushroom festival is in July, mm -hmm. but we don't even have the exact dates yet. Yeah. Because they don't announce it very far in advance. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Awesome. And then um you mentioned the so the mountain community cabins. Like, can you explain a little bit more about that? Is that like a dorm situation? Um yeah. yeah, I don't have any pictures on here, but um, so the man communados, so the cabins that were sort of built to house ecotourism along these mountains are all, they were built in the last like five to 10 years. They're adobe cabins with fireplaces and your own bathroom. There's a gas hookup for hot water. Um, and every night they'll, they come and light fires in everybody's cabins. Um, the cabins can fit between like um, four and six people, uh, but we only uh, have double occupancy for each of the cabins. So you'll only be sharing with one other person for Sierra Nortes in the in the cabins. And so they're they're fairly similar both in Quahimaloyas and in El Carazal because they basically use the same design mm -hmm. going back to this kind of communal approach of how they were going to sort of create accommodations for people to come to the Sierra Nortes because there's no private land that can be purchased and built on. So there is no private accommodations in right. these mountains. So it's managed by the community. Um, the folks that are gonna be working with us and welcoming us, Mamo and some of the others, that is their um, cargo to the community. Like they all take different uh, turns, like basically manning these cabanas from the community. Um, and we'll tell, we'll talk to you more about sort of this different way in which the villages work in these communities where everyone actually has a role in helping the communities function. Um, and those uh, cabins, all of the revenue that goes to them are uh, used to both maintain the cabins and also return, uh, divide it back across the whole community at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so we really enjoy being in the Sierra Nortes because that's um, the model for which they host people. Awesome. Thank you. That was all the questions I have right now that I can think of. Yeah. Yeah. So, happy to meet you all. Thank you. You can kind of see them behind the jars in that picture at the top of the of the slide. The little oh, red. Oh, yeah. I see them. But yeah. they <laughs> The, the mountains, the Sierra Norte mountains and like where we get to stay is, are, are just stunning. It's, and it's, it's a really, little, yeah, it's, it's, it's really beautiful. I say rustic chic. <laughs> rustic chic, for sure. But we also had people be like, I am surprised. I thought I was going to be in a, a tent yeah. and it was going to be like this. And, yeah, no, you know, um, there, I wouldn't say there's guaranteed Wi-Fi in your cabins, but if you get closer outside of your cabins, you should be able to access Wi-Fi or in the restaurants where we mm -hmm. have our time so you'll also should be able to check email if you'd like um but among, it, other, it, things. among other things but it won't be uh it probably won't be in your bedroom in your cabins. <laughs> cool awesome great does anybody have any other uh, yeah. um i was going to say that i wanted to bring a small amount of i'm going to spin some wool to bring and dye, um, but for backstrap weaving, they're just really small amounts, like maybe half an ounce for an ounce. Cool. Um, if that's okay to throw it in a dye bath. 
Oh yeah. Just a really tiny amount. Mm -hmm. That should be fine. In fact, that's why I'm going to get with Alyssa and we're going to kind of put together the ideal weights that we think that mm -hmm. we can handle in addition to what you're going to be dying with what we're providing, because you're going to get um, a certain amount of grams of silk to dye. And then I'm also going to have a significant amount of wool that is prepped and ready to go. That's in white, gray, as well as dark colors. So I'm going to work with Alyssa on sort of breaking out a, a so that each person will walk away with sort of mini skeins of a variety of these things. I love over dyeing colored wool. The colors are just, they're heathery and muted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm excited. I haven't had a real opportunity to, to dye with the different colors. So are you just talking it about adds a depth. existing? The gray really adds depth to the to the mushroom dye colors. Gray is my favorite. Darker darker wolves don't really show colors real well. Dye colors real well. It's just too overwhelming. Susu grays. Do you have a question as well? Yeah, Susu. Oh yeah. Well, I already signed up for it. I'm coming. So the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm wondering if. You're throwing out names of places and I'm writing them down and I'm misspelling everything. Could I like connect with you guys to get a oh, list yeah. of, you know, I spoke to you or uh, emailed you, Zach, about I'm going to try to work in a travel grant for this. Uh -huh. um, so as much information, as much information as I can give them would be really awesome. Yeah. And we don't if hold you, back on the website too. If, yeah, if you go to the, um, and we'll send this around, but if you go to the Sierra Norte page on the fungivore, we have an itinerary. And on that, itinerary, up. it'll list every single um, place that we'll stop okay. in. And so start there. Okay. If there's any other things we can fill in the blanks, mm -hmm. I can absolutely cool. do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't know how accurate that was, if it changes for every tour or whatever. But... Well, no, those are very specific to this year. Okay. Yeah. Wait, so Susu, what's your name? Susie. Susie. Okay. It's right. just sometimes Susie when Crawford. it's a different name in the... Okay, Susan. Okay, great. It's just the yeah. different name on the bottom. I didn't quite put it <laughs> together. Awesome. Like Zoom never. So this is all the old information. My best friend and I shared a Zoom account for the longest time. So whenever I got on, I was Lindsay for like... Yeah. I'd always have to get in and rename myself like before yeah. pitch like who's Lindsay <laughs> um, <laughs> um Andrea you have any questions or are you um I, I do yeah I'm sorry I was just getting home and I'm still in the car so that I'm not uh, being disturbed <laughs> I feel that um, sometimes you gotta be on the move <laughs> yeah um I have a I have children at home and they you know they start to hey mom hey mom hold on give me a second um, what is the weather like during the time period that we would be there? So it's really lovely and it will be, it will be raining at times because we need the rain for the mushrooms. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it doesn't rain all day. And actually sometimes in the mountains, we've gone days without it actually yeah. raining. Sometimes it's more in the afternoons, the mountains will be a bit cooler. So I would say suggest, um, layers, um, will be in the forest a lot. So, um, kind of trekking pants, hiking boots, uh, a, a hoodie, or a, I say toboggan, but nobody else uses that beanie. term, beanie. <laughs> um, uh, uh, so, and comfy, you know, and I, then I'll also, when I'm out, I'll wear a short sleeve or a tank top and then wear a, a button shirt over that or something, just like, so I can take it off if it's, it's like, if it's the, the sunniness of the day is beautiful and it gets warm, you know? Um, and so I'd say in the daytime, it's pretty comfortable and the night it gets cooler. Um, and then we have fires. Mm -hmm. It can probably dip down to like 45, 50. Yeah. I think Pahi Malayas definitely are, are up there. Yeah. Up 10, it was cold. It For sure. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> a be it's beanie, it's beanie weather and beanie and hoodie weather, um, and layer weather and, and Pahi Malayas. And El Carazal is a little more in the valley, but in the mornings it can be pretty crisp. When the dew when the dew drops, okay. um, but then again, the daytime, um, you know, generally we always are wearing long pants, um, just because that's how people do here in Mexico. But it can it can be shorts weather. I could I could say, 
Uh, and then it could switch, you know, 4 p.m. the clouds roll in, you get the monsoon weather, and all of a sudden you're wishing you did have long pants and, and sleeves with you. But I prefer pants okay. and shorts just because you want to protect your legs. Yeah. Um, like, we actually don't have, like, poison ivy or anything that will sting you, but I just like to wear pants because when you're mushroom hunting, yeah, you're kind of out in the, in the nature. There's cactus. Some. There's some cactus. cactus. But like in the valley or in Oaxaca City, I mean, during the day, you could be wearing a sundress. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's warmer in the valley, but we won't be in the valley as much. Mm -hmm. um, but I just say layers. And even then, it's pretty fresh, you know, and it's it's very green here at that time. And uh, there's especially in, in later August, early September. Um, and so the air is fresh. The, the breezes are fresh uh, and it doesn't tend to get above 80 degrees unless you're like in the sunshine. Okay. And I don't know if I missed it or not, but what, how many people are you looking for this trip, the max amount of participants? We'll be capping this trip at 12 people. Okay. Um, we like to keep it small. It's the size of sort of a van. Um, and yeah, we just, we keep it under 12 people. Mm -hmm. okay. Between 12 is, is generally the group size is what we have. It's easier for workshops too. Yeah. So it's good to keep it at a smaller size. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then the traveling in is it in a van or a bus? Yeah, we use like how a, are we traveling? From the travel in a fourteen passenger van, um, and it's uh, they're licensed to our companies, seat belts and all of the things, um, and um, that's and I think there's I guess on, on this one there's particular travel days we'll go between quite Himalayas and Carousel Carousel to San Pedro and back yeah we'll have a 14 person van with us mm -hmm. most of the time mm -hmm. um that basically takes us to where our four a points start um for the most part mm -hmm. and um yeah we'll have a van pretty much taking us around the whole time mm -hmm. okay when we're not no. when we're not walking yeah, we're because not. there's a lot of just walking directly from where we stay to the trails, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like Himalayas will so, walk, yeah. yeah, Quahima Himalayas will rock, walk right out into, into, um, the, woods. into yeah. the woods and uh, El Carazal as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the cabins are right there. It's pretty great. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank I'm you. Assuming... Yeah. Thanks, Andrea. We really appreciate you tuning in. I'm assuming the scholarship is for just people who have not signed up yet. Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of it was, um, I mean, it's aimed at making it more accessible for folks here in Mexico as well. Um, and it's, oh, cool. it's this is the first year that we've felt like we've got a good, we've got a good start in the year so we can do that. And it feels really, um, it's really neat. It's been, the response has been great. It's been awesome to meet folks um, that signed up. There's a lot of uh, PhD students and and just really interesting um, younger a lot younger, of passionate people a lot of passionate younger folks that have come through and so it's been really lovely um, uh, to see that new wave of folks come through yeah so are there any locals joining this trip yeah there will be we actually are talking to a couple of Oaxacans yeah um, specifically Fun. and making more arrangements so they can join as well actually because mm -hmm. we That's really fun. would like to make it as accessible as possible mm -hmm. yeah yeah um so as far as like the double occupancy how do you match people um because I am planning to sign up <laughs> so I just want to know like how would how would that work we never we like, never compromise on gender, how people sleep what's that we never compromise on gender so that's that unless people specifically ask to room with a friend or somebody um we'll always pair you with the same gender and we do our best to do age matching that's kind of a crapshoot with who's coming on on the trip yeah um we saw or sometimes we'll get a read on folks who some people who have snoring they tell us in advance um and so yeah we we've done a pretty good job of matching people up um, and we can always switch if you're like nope this isn't working we can we can flip rooms it's not like it's static or it has to stay that way or yeah so we haven't had any we haven't had any roommate um mm -hmm. issues in the, in the past <laughs> There haven't been a lot of okay. Dudes. I will say, since you mentioned snoring, I don't snore, but I cannot sleep with the snorer. I just can't. <laughs> Noted. <too. laughs> Sorry, nothing personal. 
<laughs> we have mezcal and earplugs, so you'll be fine. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? I said, we have mezcal and earplugs. You'll be all right. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, that's something I'm hoping to get um, some, hoping you will find us some good mezcal to take home. That, that will not be a problem. <laughs> yeah, we can Yay! support mezcal to take home. And then we always actually bring um, a, a few bottles for people to just try, as well as like to enjoy a few, like a mezcalito in the evenings in the mountains so we do we do bring a little bit to share not for excess but um for everybody <laughs> taste and to just in, enjoy mm -hmm. sort of the taste of Oaxaca and we do always recommend yeah. either coming a little early or staying a little late and hanging out in Oaxaca City a couple of nights because it's really we don't spend a lot of time in the city we, we our focus is more on the mountains and the mushrooms and it is it's kind of a choose your own adventure and everyone that comes here finds something different and and having lived here for several years you know every time we come we're like so what'd you find and it's like oh we didn't know about that oh cool <laughs> <laughs> so we definitely recommend that folks come here and and sort of discover Oaxaca on their own um as well um or follow through on what they've learned and and go visit Teotitlan or you know sort yeah of I have a city guide that I provide. Mm -hmm. um, we are, yeah, we're really helpful to help people on the in or out mm -hmm. um, with any plans if they want to. It feels really safe too. I'm a cautious traveler and haven't traveled a whole lot internationally, but Oaxaca felt so much safer than I ever expected. And Teotitlan is just like a very welcoming community as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, so. I mean, Oaxaca is a very welcoming community and uh, across the board. Um, yeah. And, and the, as Zach says, the airport is very, is very small. Um, it's a one terminal airport. It's You're, super tiny. It's so they'll, roll up, they'll roll up the stairs to the front and back of the airplane for you to deplane. And then, um, yeah. It's, Either it's, you go through customs, which is easy as a cake. There, and then, you just walk right in and it's it's really easy and then they have a kiosk that's like very well marked that says the collectivas and taxis and it's 125 pesos which is like six or seven dollars and you just give them your the hotel and they'll just take you straight there they'll give you a ticket it's like really easy and mm -hmm. also just for those who sign up like we provide a important information page which actually has like everything you could ever imagine about traveling to mexico <laughs> and as soon as someone finds something that we didn't imagine we, we put it on we that. Added it. <laughs> so it's sort of like a significantly deep q a on yeah. uh coming to mexico and yeah and trying to just help everybody prepare yeah so but yeah oaxaca is a tourist town as well so they they know how to get they know how to move people through the airport it's not really chaotic i mean it's not chaotic it's a beautiful airport like mm -hmm. everything it's 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 a it's an easy landing mm -hmm. i'd say <laughs> thanks andrea adios i mean i definitely plan on staying or coming a couple days early and probably staying a couple of days afterwards so um yeah if you have any recommendations for locations to stay or if it's just the same hotel we're meeting in on the night of the 28th you know that would be great and hotel Mayela is like dead center it's it's like four blocks okay. from the santa domingo church which is sort of like the heart of it's the botanical gardens and the and the uh the pre-hispanic museum and and the music conquistador museum i believe it's booked before right now because i think sue tried to to do it did you try and book it after as well i did yeah, I know. and they're, they are booked up. Okay. okay. Is it yeah, Galagetza? To recommend. It's not Galagetza. It's just Mayela is a great hotel that it's has, like, has yeah. a lot of, like, we return to it every year. And as Oaxaca gets more and more important, like, more and more well known, like, mm -hmm. It's like every year we're competing with like five times more people who have discovered Oaxaca and are all coming here. So, you know, that's why we actually go through and book out a lot of our hotels and accommodations like super in advance. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Because now there's just so many more people. Um, but yeah. we will provide, we have, yeah, I will places. provide like a list of secondary options that are in the same area um, for folks to look for. Because mm -hmm. um, Sue did bring it to my attention that we, uh, that Myella is booked, but there's another one that I recommended to Sue that I'm going to recommend other people that's in that area, mm -hmm. same price point. Um, it's very reasonable. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yay. Okay, cool. Cool. Right. Awesome. Well, it's so great to meet y'all in person. To see you again, Sue. 
<laughs> looking like forward to the trip. Yeah, we're nice looking to meet you, Susie, and nice good to see you again, Rebecca. Yeah, looking forward to meeting everyone in person. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, awesome. All right. Well, Bye, Sue. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.